Hello everyone and welcome to what might just be my favourite tutorial so far. Today I'm going to show you how to paint a barn owl. Um, I love owls, I love all owls but uh, barn owls I must say are my particular favourite uh, so I'm really excited to share this one with you. Today as you can see I'm beginning with um, a pencil outline, you can see it's very rough, uh, just a vague outline of face, feet and feathers. Uh, and I'm starting with a wash, this is a very very pale wash, um, a mixture of uh, burnt sienna and yellow ochre mixed up with an awful lot of water. Um, I'm starting it very very pale just to get in the uh, initial colour down around the face. And while that's still wet, I've decided to uh, put in the uh, the little edge of the uh, the facial uh, disc, I believe it's called, of the owl. A little front ruff of feathers that on a barn owl is uh, in this lovely heart shape. Uh, you can see I'm using wet on wet technique to uh, just blend some of that colour out. Starting with yellow ochre, that's the yellow colour you can see here. Uh, using my very fine brush, uh, just backing that up with a little bit of uh, raw umber, deepening the colour. Um, I don't want it to look too much like I've simply just drawn it on uh, with a fine liner, so I'm sort of feathering and blending uh, as I go, uh, wetting the paint and uh, putting in a careful dab there of tissue just to pull some of the colour out, putting it, putting it back in a little bit more neatly. You can see it just sort of blending out here as I'm going over and just darkening and uh, getting the detail in that I want. So you can see here a little more detail. Barn owls have this lovely uh, mottled colouring on part of their feathers, this darker colour usually comes in over the head. So you can see what I've done here is used a very fine brush, again using wet and wet, and this is some diluted uh, Payne's grey that I'm using here. Uh, just putting a few dots of that in, letting it diffuse in naturally into our lovely yellow colour uh, so it looks all natural and blended in. I'll be going back in in a minute and just putting in uh, some more darker patches as well. What the uh, initial colour is there for is to sort of diffuse out and give it that little background colour. And then we can go back in with some darker paint and just uh, pull out some darks, really pull out some detail. So I'm happy with that initially around the head. You can see here I'm using my larger brush, this is my squirrel mop brush, uh, to just fill in some of the body here. The barn owl bodies are usually quite pale, quite soft sort of whitish colour, sort of off-white creamy colour. Uh, so this is a really really pale wash here, even paler than before. Um, I've thinned out my um, yellow ochre and raw sienna mix even more and um, just to, to, to swash quickly over that. And then you can see I've just darkened up the colour. Uh, just under the head a little bit more. And now just some little dots, little dots of Payne's Grey, allowing those to diffuse in. I uh, just really want that colour to sort of leach in, uh, almost dissolve really. don't really want dark spots at this point. This is just for the little freckles you get so often on barn owl feathers. What I'm actually doing here as well, you saw my hand there, um, uh, sprinkling a little bit of salt over the paint as well. 
Uh, you may have seen this technique before. That uh, helps the colour sort of diffuse out, give you these lovely sort of blown out markings, almost sort of feathery effects. Once that's dry, uh, you'll be able to see that properly. You can see here that um, I'm happy with what I've done so far. I've put in a few extra darts uh, just at the top part of the owl's chest and let that diffuse in as well. Uh, and I'm concentrating now on the owl's face. You can see putting some very, very pale wash in there. That's basically just uh, paint water. That's, that's dirty paint water I'm using there. <laughs> Uh, it's the best thing sometimes if you want to uh, keep most of the white of the paper but you just need a little bit of definition, you need that little bit of colour, that little bit of shape and shadow. Uh, and so for the lines here you can see I've just uh, I've done them in raw umber, I just going in and darkening those down, the lines that define the beak uh, and define the eye space. You can see there, just a little dab of uh, tissue. My colour got too dark, so quickly before it dried, I decided to uh, use my tissue to pull it out a little bit. Something you can do with watercolour. Uh, if you make a mistake, usually you can correct it as long as you're quick uh, and as long as you're careful. You can see now I'm just blending some of these uh, these darker browns in. We're in a little bit of definition here around the edges of the face uh, because I want the uh, the white feathers where the beak is. Uh, to stand out a little more prominently. Uh, of course, it's it's hard to get white to stand out on white. <laughs> so, there's a sort of a darker white, if you like, sort of a creamy colour uh, around the edges of the face. So now I'm happy with the face so far. Decided to start the eyes. Now the eyes are crucial. Any animal painting, you always look first at the eyes. They give them so much character. And uh, so it's always why I'm most nervous doing the eyes, because I always think, well, if I, if I mess this up, I'm going to have to start again. <laughs> uh, barn owls, like all owls, have got these lovely rounded eyes. You can see I've just drawn in a lovely round shape here. Um, to outline them, I'm using my very, very fine uh, triple zero brush. Uh, and I've used, uh, oh, what is it? Raw umber, that's what I've used. <laughs> I just had a slight brain fail there. Raw umber uh, to do the outside of the eyes, a little uh, sort of eyeliner, if you like. And now I'm going in uh, with eye-free black to fill in the, uh, the pupils. Uh, I've deliberately done this whilst the brown colour is wet so that you get a gentle diffusion there. It's not like a big, thick line. And you can see here that um, I've left a white space for the eye, initially quite a large semicircular space, which I'm now going in, just going round carefully with my brush, carefully, carefully, narrowing it down until it gets to the shape that I'm happy with. And there you go, one eye done. And now for the even harder part, <laughs> matching them up. Uh, you can see here again, doing the outline in the raw umber, uh, and again, I'm going to leave that raw umber wet when I put in the uh, the black because I like the way it sort of almost gently feathers into the colour, giving it that lovely diffusion. Don't want too many hard edges here. Uh, that black is really going to stand out, as you can see, against the, uh, the soft colours of the owl. Um, so it's got to be right. Again, you can see, leaving this large shape for the eye and then carefully filling it in. It's always best to initially leave far more white space than you need and then go back in and fill it later. But it's uh, easy to colour over white space with watercolour. It's far harder to, uh, to bring whites back if you lose them. So there you go, there's my top a bird eye painting tip for you today. <laughs> Be careful with your whites. <laughs> So 
and now I'm going in and I'm doing the owl's feathers. These are his top wing feathers uh, using some yellow ochre here just to really start to bring in that lovely yellowy colour. Uh, and I'm dotting it with a little bit of Payne's Grey. Just working my way down there. You can see that the paint is still quite wet because you can see how much diffusion is happening, which um, I'm really happy with because I really want these colours to to, uh, to marry and mingle, really. If you actually look at uh, barn owls in the wild or in photographs, you can see they've got these lovely almost marbled colour on some of their feathers, this uh, yellow, white and uh, sort of dark grey, which is the, uh, the look I'm aiming for for these top feathers here today. And here we are doing exactly the same process with the second part of the wing. I've let the top part dry a little because I don't want the paint to bleed over too much. Uh, so it's sort of not fully dry but it's mostly dry but because uh, I'm impatient <laughs> and didn't want to wait for it to fully dry. Uh, you can see I'm just using exactly the same technique, uh, the yellow ochre going on and then just gently, gently dabbing in the Payne's Grey where I need it to diffuse. And you can see here that I've put in the rest of the wing using exactly the same technique. Using the yellow ochre, using the Payne's grey, just gently dabbing them on where I need them. You can see I've got this lovely barring on the forewing there. And I'm just filling in the tail part now. You can also see that I've left a little white space in between some of the feathers there. Don't want it all to just sort of merge together and blur into one. But I also don't want dark outlines. Uh, so that's my compromise. Uh, using this lovely loose sort of technique of uh, leaving some white space there, letting your imagination uh, fill in the gaps and fill in the details. So what I'm doing now that I've finished his feathers is uh, it's time for the detail work. Putting in his uh, little legs and feet here with a really, really pale wash 
of uh, rose madder hue, so the colour I'm using here. So initially I'm putting it on quite pale, because uh, I just worried about how strong it would come out, but now you can see it's dotting in it a little darker, just to get a little bit of shading in there, a little bit of shadow, because uh, obviously I can't leave them white, I want them to stand out a wee bit. So. Uh, I'm also using the same colour for his beak. You can see very, very pale pink there. Just uh, filling that in, just make his face, <laughs> his little face look a little bit more finished. Just darkening down that side there. And there we go, just adding a little, few little pink freckles and speckles to the legs. Little scaly legs. You can see I'm just using Payne's Grey again here for the claws. I like to echo colours where I can. And the uh, barn owls have got such lovely, uh, strong curves or sharp talons at the end of their uh, at the end of their feet. Using Payne's Grey and leaving a little bit of white. You can see there. I'm filling it in, but I'm filling it in a little roughly, and leaving a little bit of white paint showing through. White paint, white paper, sorry. <laughs> a little bit of white paper showing through there. Uh, just to uh, imitate the sort of light catching and glinting uh, off of those lovely claws. And here we go, it's just a, the final step now. You can see I've done this little log that he's standing on. That's just uh, burnt amber. That's all I've used for the log there, just in uh, differing uh, concentrations. And, and I've decided to uh, fill in some moss. You can see I've left some white spaces, which I'm now filling in uh, with sap green initially. Just uh, putting it in for that lovely, bright, vibrant pop of green there. Giving you a little texture. I'm going to come in with some uh, perylene green to uh, give the moss a little bit of a darker colour. You can see there, and just adding it down the sides give the illusion of uh, damp, of uh, deep colour, uh, just a, a lovely rich colour here. Didn't want to go too mad on detail on the uh, on the little stump that he's sitting on because after all this is uh, this is all about the owl, this painting. Still, I did want it to look good uh, and I think I've done that. I'm really pleased with this one. Final touches, you can see there, a little bit of white gouache. Uh, not strictly, strictly, strictly speaking, watercolour. Uh, you can see here, I'm just going in with my fine detail brush and adding a little bit of white. This is an excellent way to get white detail into your painting uh, if you've had to paint over and you've lost some of the whites. You can see here, I'm just putting in a little bit of white over the shoulder, the top of the head, uh, and adding a few flecks to his chest feathers as well. Uh, just anyway, really, there's a lot of darts. I'm just putting in a couple of little dots of white just to really uh, bring out a little bit of detail and to really just make this painting uh, come to life. Also putting in a little bit of detail here. This is my very fine brush. Just a little bit of white and uh, a little bit of uh, burnt umber as well. I'm just doing a little bit of almost feathering around the edge of his little facial disc there, just to soften that down. You'll be able to see as well, which I forgot to show earlier, so apologies for that. You can see just below his face, along the uh, the slightly darker chest area, there's um, the sort of paler patches have appeared in the colour, that's where the salt was on. It was on there and it was across the head. I forgot to show me brushing that off, but these uh, little blooms of paler colour, that's what the salt does. I'll try and show that better in another video. Um, but here we are, the uh, the finished product. I'm really, really happy with this. I'm so excited to share this with you. Uh, please let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, I personally uh, love him. <laughs> uh, like I love all owls, but I'm really pleased with how this one's come up. I love his eyes. I love his uh, sweet little face. Uh, and overall, I'm just uh, really excited to share this with you. I'd love it if uh, some of you could watch this and 
be inspired to have a go at something like this yourself of course please uh, leave a like if you enjoyed this video please subscribe if you'd like to see more uh, and yeah thank you for watching happy painting everyone <laughs>